Hello everybody, my name is Iman at SID. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go ahead and finish the second half of chapter form. And here we want to learn about conformational analysis. We want to remember that just like us, groups of atoms also like having their personal space. And we can use this idea to build an intuition for identifying high and low energy Newman projections. In our last lecture, we learned how to convert from bond line into Newman projections. Now, Newman projections are useful because once you draw the Newman projection of a bond line, you can observe what happens if you were to rotate a carbon-carbon single bond. And so we'll start here. You have the bond line of butane right here. This is butane, and here's the bond line for it. Now, if we're observing our butane bond line structure at this angle we can go ahead and draw the newman projection for it like so i went ahead and did that for us since now we're pros at drawing newman projections and now we know that newman projections are all about helping us observe rotations around the single carbon carbon bond so when we're drawing these newman projections right and we're looking at for example this butane at this angle here's our first carbon that we're observing which is analogous to this carbon in our Newman projections. And then the carbon right behind it, I'm going to draw it in red, All right, is analogous to this carbon in our Newman projections. Now, what if we wanted to rotate about this carbon-carbon single bond? What if we want to rotate at 60 degrees or 120 degrees or 180 degrees? What is this butane going to look like? Well, the best way to do this is using our Newman projections. This is why we convert our bond line into Newman projections. Newman projections makes this more efficient. All right, it makes it more efficient because we can focus on rotating just one of these carbons. Let's rotate this back carbon right here. Sorry, that's a bad circle, all right? If we wanna rotate about this carbon-carbon single bond, let's just rotate the back carbon. So we start here, this is our first Newman projection. I just copied and pasted it. All right, here it is where our two biggest groups are methyls. Look at that. I just want you to notice this. We're going to start to assign some terms for some of these patterns. But drawing our Newman structure straight up for butane, looking at it at this angle, all right, we get this first Newman projection where the two biggest groups are methyls are the furthest away from each other. Look at that. The furthest they can be away from each other. All right, now taking this back carbon, we're going to go ahead and rotate. We're going to rotate that back carbon by, say, 60 degrees. So we're going to be moving these back groups along with us. All right, now if we do this, what happens is now some of, the, some of these groups are going to begin to overlap, right? Because we, we're only moving around this back carbon and the groups associated with that back carbon by 60 degrees. Now what we get are some of these, some, these groups are all beginning to overlap. All right, we have a methyl hydrogen interaction here, a methyl hydrogen interaction here, and a hydrogen hydrogen interaction here. Now do another 60 degree turn of our back carbon only. All right, here's our back carbon. We're gonna go ahead and move all the groups again that are associated to the back carbon by another 60 degrees all right so they're moving around and what we have what we have here all right is here's our back carbon now and some of the back groups the groups associated with that back carbon have also moved again now in this newman projection look at what we observe the two biggest groups our methyl groups which are a lot bigger than just our hydrogen groups they're really close to each other all right, they're really close to each other. Now, one more 60-degree turn. All right, one more 60-degree turn. And now what we get is our Newman projection. And here we have two hydrogen-hydrogen overlaps. And we also have our two biggest groups right on top of each other with this rotation. And so looking at our rotations here, where our two largest groups are the furthest away, all right, the name for this Newman projection is anti, all right? So this first Newman projection is anti, or in other words, you might hear it also being called the staggered Newman projection for this group. The methyl groups are the farthest apart. So there's gonna be no torsional strain where the electrons are like 
in each other's way. There's no steric interactions where just all the atoms are in each other's way. Every, every atom is, you know, it has its own personal space as best as possible here. And none of those bulky groups are interacting with each other in a non-favorable way that would potentially increase the energy of the molecule in that form. All right, so when our two biggest groups are as far away as possible and there's no, uh, there's no overlap, like direct overlap of atoms, all right, your anti-confirmation is going to represent that and it's going to be the lowest energy confirmation of that molecule. So this is probably the most favorable position for the molecule to be in because it's the lowest in energy. And when we draw the energy diagram for this molecule, all right, it's going to have the lowest energy here. Now, when we rotate it 60 degrees, all right, when we rotate it 60 degrees, we get this Newman projection. This Newman projection is called eclipsed. Why? Because there are groups on top of groups. All right, we have groups on top of groups. Look at that. Methyl is right over the hydrogen. They're in each other's personal space. The two hydrogens are in each other's per personal space. Now, this hydrogen, hydrogen, let me highlight it in blue. This hydrogen, hydrogen eclipsed inter interaction is going to result in torsional strain. All right, and we're going to define torsional strain in a second. We're going to scroll down here. All right, torsional strain results from the repulsion of electrons forming the bonds of two adjacent atoms. So these two hydrogens being in an eclipsed interaction is not favorable because of torsional strain. And what happens is this is going to result in an increase in potential energy. All right, so the energy cost here for this hydrogen-hydrogen overlap is going to be about roughly 4 kilojoules per mole that this molecule, that this conformation is going to increase in energy by that much because of that hydrogen-hydrogen overlap uh, eclipsed interaction. Now, what we also see, and I'm going to highlight this in red, is this methyl hydrogen interactions as well. That methyl group and that hydrogen, they're in each other's personal space. All right, so this in, this uh, eclipsed interaction between methyl and hydrogen is also going to result in torsional strain. And the energy cost for this interaction for each methyl hydrogen is 6 kilojoules per mole. So because we have this methyl and hydrogen eclipsed interaction, they're each going to increase the conformation of this molecule by 6 kilojoules per mole. And so that overall energy of this conformation is going to have an increased energy form of 6 plus 6 plus 4 kilojoules per mole. And that's going to be 16 kilojoules per mole. Let me write that better. 16 kilojoules per mole of energy increase because of the conf this eclipsed confirmation. All right, which is why we see, right, we've labeled this two, which is why we see that two has a higher energy in our energy diagram for these uh, confirmations. All right, it's because of those eclipsed interactions. Now, we're going to rotate this again, this back carbon, 60 degrees again. All right, and let's look here. Now, this is called gauche, all right? This, this kind of confirmation is called gauche, all right? It is where you have the, where you don't have uh, groups right on top of each other, right? But it's still not your lowest energy confirmation, all right? You still have some steric interaction here between your two bulky groups, right? They're not as far away from... Uh, as possible from each other they're actually within the same vicinity as each other and so this is still gonna slightly increase the energy of this confirmation especially in comparison to anti right nothing is on top of each other here but still your two big groups they're they don't have as much personal space as they would like right so they're not the lowest energy confirmation they still um they're still not the lowest energy confirmation, but they're still not as high as our eclipsed interaction. So this methyl-methyl interaction right here, all right, let me let me do that in green, right? These methyls, these two big bulky groups being within the same vicinity as each other, 
there is still going to be an energy cost here. Not, not a great energy cost, but still an energy cost nevertheless. When your two methyl groups are uh, within each other's vicinity, right? They're right next to each other, but they're not on top of each other. All right. This is going to cost us about 3.8 kilojoules per mole, which is why confirmation three, although it has lower energy than our eclipsed, all right, is still not as low as one. All right. Just because the two big methyl groups are closer to each other than they were in the anti confirmation. Now, another 60 degree turn. All right, and now we get another version of uh, an eclipsed interaction. Here we have two hydrogen hydrogen interactions. I am going to highlight those in yellow. All right, each of these, each of these hydrogen hydrogen interactions, uh, eclipsed interactions, are going to cost us four kilojoules per mole. Right, we talked about this in uh, confirmation number two, but now we also have this new overlap. This methyl. These two methyl groups are right on top of each other. This is very bad in terms of energy cost. This is going to result in not only torsional strain, but great steric interaction. The energy cost of a methyl eclipsed over a methyl is actually 11 kilojoules per mole. All right, so now we have two hydrogens at 4 kilojoule per mole and an 11 kilojoule per mole energy cost because of the methyl methyl eclipse interaction the energy cost of this whole conformation is 19 kilojoules per mole all right so very high which is why that fourth conformational uh uh newman projection is the highest of them all all right so just to recap all right there are three types of conformations all right there's three types of conformations you're eclipsed is when the angle difference between two groups is zero. They're, the large, the groups are right on top of each other, all right? And sometimes here, you're gonna have your two largest groups exactly on top of each other. So there's gonna be steric interaction and torsional st st uh, strain, all right? That's gonna really up the energy cost of that confirmation. That confirmation is, is gonna have the highest energy. Your eclipsed interactions are gonna have your highest energy. All right, then you have your gauche interactions, all right? This is when groups are within the vis same vicinity as each other, but they're not on top of each other. They're going to have a dihedral angle of about 60 degrees, all right? Now, when your hydrogens have are in gauche interaction where they're 60 degrees apart, this is of no energy cost, really. But when you have two big groups like methyls 60 degrees away from each other, that's going to have an energy cost, and we talked about it. Not a great energy cost, but it will, it will have an energy cost. And so your Gauche interactions, your Gauche confirmations are not going to be your highest energy uh, confirmations, but they're still also not going to be your lowest. Your lowest is going to be your anti or your staggered confirmation, where your largest groups are going to be as far away as possible. Look at these two methyls. They're like 180 degrees away. All right, they're not bothering each other. They all have their personal space. And so these are going to be your lowest energy confirmation. All right. So now um, let's get into let's get, let's do a practice problem now. All right. Let's look at this right here, this molecule right here. OK, we want to identify the highest and the lowest energy confirmation. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just right away draw draw the Newman projections of this, all right? We're looking at it in this direction. Let me draw that a little bit better. All right, we're looking at this molecule at this carbon. So this is going to be our front carbon. Okay, and we're looking at it like this. All right. We're looking at it like this. So this is our front carbon. All right, right away we have this ethyl group we see pointing at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to write ethyl at the bottom here. And now... What we see is we have this wedge, this methyl group on a wedge, and this hydrogen, right? This implied hydrogen's on a dash. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw that. Our methyl group is on a wedge coming out of the page, and our hydrogen is going in. So this methyl group is on my right hand, and the hydrogen's on my 
left hand, all right? So we're going to draw our methyl group on the right side. Going to draw our methyl group on the right side. Here's our methyl and our hydrogen on our left side. All right, oops, I put L instead of <laughs> hydrogen. All right, perfect. So that's the first part of this. Now, the back carbon is the carbon right behind right behind this one. So this is our second carbon. All right, what's attached to the second carbon? Well, pointing up is this other ethyl group. So we're going to go ahead and write ethyl. And then there's just going to be two hydrogens here, one on a wedge, one on a dash. They're both hydrogens, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, we don't have to do the whole wedge on the right hand, dash on the left. They're both hydrogens. So we're going to go ahead and draw that. Now we're going to combine these to get our final Newman projection. All right, we're going to... Oh, my pen does not want to work. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to draw that first layer. All right, we have a methyl, a hydrogen, and an ethyl group. And then we're going to draw our second layer here. I'm going to do it in purple. All right. And here we have our ethyl group at the top and two hydrogens here. All right, now we want to draw our highest energy conformation and our lowest energy conformation. So we're going to start. We're going to start off. We're going to start a new line. We're going to redraw this really quickly. All right, so this is our first confirmation. All right, what do we notice here? All right, what do we notice here? We have our two biggest groups. Our two biggest groups are our two ethyls in this molecule, right? We see that we have two ethyl groups, and they are as far away from each other as possible. That's that's a good sign, all right? That's a good sign, but we also have this ethyl and methyl right here next to each other within 60 degrees of each other, all right? They're within 60 degrees of each other. Cool, so let's keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and um, rotate this now, 60 degrees. Just the back carbon, all right? Just our back carbon in purple. We're going to rotate it by 60 degrees. When we do this, all right, our front stays the same because we're only rotating our back carbon. Our methyl stays here. Our hydrogen stays here. And our ethyl stays here. Beautiful. Now, this back carbon is what we're rotating by 60 degrees. So now we have this ethyl over our methyl, all right? And now we have a hydrogen over our ethyl. And then we have another hydrogen over a hydrogen. Cool. All right, now let's notice some things here. We have an ethyl and methyl group right on top of each other. Okay, right on top of each other. There's going to be not only steric hindrance here, but also torsional strain. All right, we've got to keep that in mind. Now, we also have a ethyl and hydrogen on top of each other and a hydrogen and hydrogen on top of each other. All right, so all things we need to keep in mind as we draw some more confirmations. All right, now another 60 degrees all right another 60 degrees and remember our front carbon stays the same it's our back carbon that we're going to rotate so again we're going to draw our front carbon is staying the same but we're rotating that back carbon all right now when we rotate that back carbon our ethyl has moved here and our hydrogens have moved here now look at this our two ethyl groups are 60 degrees within each other our two biggest groups are really close all right and then also again we have this ethyl methyl 60 degree gauche interaction okay so we have two gauche interactions between our two biggest groups all right we have two gauche interactions here between a methyl and ethyl and an ethyl and ethyl Ooh, not super good all right whereas our first our first molecule here, all we really have is this ethyl-methyl uh, Gauche interaction. All right. So that's something we really need to keep in mind here. All right. Now, let's do another 60-degree turn. Just one more 60-degree turn and see where we end up, okay? Another 60-degree turn. All right, because then that would mean we've done a full 180. All right, our front carbon, again, we're not rotating that, so nothing is moving here. We're going to keep everything consistent, but we're just moving that back carbon, all right? So we're moving it 60 degrees. So now, 
we have our ethyl right here cool beans we have our hydrogen right here and we have a hydrogen right here all right this is another eclipse confirmation and look at this we have our ethyl on top of an ethyl all right so we have some eclipsed we have some eclipsed interactions between the ethyl and ethyl group and we have an eclipsed interaction between our methyl and hydrogen and our hydrogen hydrogen all right so now we've drawn four confirmations let's look at this let's try to figure out figure out our lowest um energy confirmation our lowest energy confirmation is probably going to be this first one right here why because it has the least energy uh cost interactions here we have our gauche ethyl methyl interaction and we have a gauche ethyl hydrogen interaction okay now our second energy confirmation here is eclipsed all right we have an ethyl hydrogen eclipsed interaction and we have a methyl uh ethyl eclipsed interaction and we have a hydrogen hydrogen eclipsed interaction let's look at this third one here we have two gauche interactions of two big groups methyl and ethyl and ethyl eclipsed with another ethyl group so we have our two biggest groups here in gauche uh in having gauche interactions okay so this third confirmation i'm going to go ahead and number them right we have two gauche um confirmations and two eclipsed confirmations remember our gauche inter uh, our gauche confirmations are obviously going to be lower in energy than eclipsed so if we're trying to find our lowest energy confirmation it's going to be between the two gauche interactions all right now we have only we have a big ethyl uh methyl interaction in both of them all right and then we have an ethyl methyl gauche interaction and an ethyl ethyl gauche interaction so obviously energy confirmation uh, uh sorry newman projection confirmation one is gonna be our lowest energy all right so this one's gonna be our lowest energy confirmation this one right here now what is our highest energy confirmation if we want to figure out our highest energy confirmation we're gonna have to compare two and four since these are our two eclipsed confirmations all right two has three eclipsed interactions ethyl and hydrogen methyl and ethyl and then hydrogen and hydrogen confirmation four has an ethyl ethyl eclipsed interaction dang that's going to be very very high a methyl and hydrogen all right and then a hydrogen hydrogen all right, so because of this ethyl ethyl eclipse interaction, this is going to be our highest energy confirmation. So we figured this out. Sometimes you'll also be given a table of the exact values of every gauche interaction and every eclipse interaction, and you can further go ahead and calculate that. All right, but here we weren't given that, so we've just just based off of. Uh, reason we were able to identify our lowest and highest interaction now david klein also gives you the exact values all right and you can go ahead and check the check that for yourself as well i'm gonna leave the second problem for you to do but i'll post the answer as well uh but other than that let's move on to the last topic of chapter four and that's gonna be chair confirmation now whenever you have a cyclohexane all right this is a cyclohexane uh, we can draw our cyclohexane by twisting it into a chair as a chair confirmation, all right? Now, we, we demonstrate our cyclohexane in a chair confirmation because there's going to be is going to be effectively our best confirmation to draw cyclohexane where angle strain and torsional strain are now effectively zero for our cyclohexane. Now, what if you begin to attach branches and substituents to the cyclohexane right like a methyl group here or two methyl groups here and then an ethyl group here how do we translate that into our chair confirmation well this is where we really want to begin to talk about axial and equatorial positions so in our chair confirmation here 
all right, in our chair conformation here, at every position, at every carbon, we're going to have one axial position and one equatorial position. Our axial position is going to follow the direction of the corner. So this corner is pointing up. Our axial position is going to be an up axial. All right, so since our axial position is an up axial then our equatorial position our equatorial positions are a slightly tilted position it's going to have to be opposite so if our axial is up we're going to have an equatorial down position all right let's look at the next carbon all right the next carbon following it all right well this carbon is pointing downwards this corner is down so our axial position is going to be down so down axial that means our equatorial position has to, and I didn't draw it right here, so we're going to ignore it really quickly. And our, our equatorial position is going to be slightly up, so equatorial up. And what's going to happen here is it's going to alternate. So this third carbon here, all right, this corner is pointing up, so it's going to be axial up, all right, equatorial down, all right, and it's going to alternate as you go around okay and so that's how you want to work with axial and equatorial positions because whenever you're dealing with uh branches or substituents on your cyclohexane you have to keep that in mind whenever you're drawing it from bond line from bond line into uh chair conformation now Using your chair conformation, you can also draw the Newman pro pro uh, projection of that. Here is the skeleton, all right, for our chair conformation. Here's the skeleton. Now, what happens here is all you're going to be changing whenever you're dealing with Whenever you're dealing with chair conformations that might have some substituents, the only things you're going to be changing is some of the hydrogens here to those branches. So this is essentially the Newman skeleton for our chair confirmation now in addition to your chair confirmation we drew we drew it like this this ring can also flip we can have a ring flip and what that means is if you had a branch that was in the axial position when you flip it you got to make sure that it is in an equatorial position so ring flips are going to change some of your branches from axial to equatorial positions and the best way to really understand all of this is by doing a couple of practice problems all right a couple of practice problems now quick note before we get into our practice problems of drawing these cyclohexanes in their chair conformations and then drawing both conformations for each uh, uh for each molecule keep in mind that when you see a wedge all right, branches that are uh, branches or substituents on wedges go in up positions. All right, and uh, substituents or branches on dashes, they go on down positions. Okay, now let's tie all of this in together. Let's do this first problem. This first problem, this is the cyclohexane we're given, and they want us to draw both conformations for cyclohexane. Now, we looked at, we have looked at bond line structures, all right? And then we've taken these bond line structures of just simple chain alkanes, all right? And then we've drawn the Newman projections of them. And then, in addition to that, we've rotated the bond, we've uh, rotated the Newman projections to see all the different conformations. Now, when we're talking about going from bond line of cyclohexanes, all right, and wanting to draw them in chair conformations, all right, when we have them in chair conformations and we want to draw both conformations, what that means is they're asking us to draw the ring flip, okay? So let's go ahead and do A. Let's draw A in chair conformation. Now, the first thing I always do is I go ahead and just draw my chair, and I draw it like this, okay? I draw it like this. All right, and I kind of keep the same technique whenever I do all of these to stay consistent, all right? I draw my chair like this, and I always number this one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Now, when I look at my bond line of the cyclohexane, I start from the top. I do one, two, three, four, five, six. You can number them any way. Just stay consistent. But this, I, I like this way of numbering. All right. Uh, pick your technique. Stay with it. All right. Stay with the same numbering. Don't change your numbering. Okay, beautiful. Now, we have everything numbered. Awesome. Now, we're going to start attaching our substituents at the proper position. So, if we look at our bond line here at position one, all right, we have a methyl group. All right, this methyl group is on a wedge. So, we have to keep in mind that methyl is going to go on an up position. And at position two, we have this ethyl group. It's on a dash. We have to keep in mind that that's going to go on a down position. Now, we're going to go back to the chair confirmation we've drawn. Now, before you get good at this, sometimes you're going to have to draw all your axial and equatorial positions at every carbon. That's okay. Start off there, all right? And when you get good at it, then you won't have to, all right? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to draw all my axial positions. Here at position one, all right, here at position one, we have corner up. Right, so our axial position is up. So this is axial up. That means our equatorial position is going to be down. So equatorial down. All right, now we're going to go to the second carbon. All right, this is a corner down. So our axial position has to be axial down now. That means our equatorial position is equatorial up. All right, and then it alternates. All right, so it's going to alternate. So I'm going to do axial up next, which means that 4 is axial down, 5 is axial up, and 6 is axial down. Same thing with equatorial. It alternates. So we started equatorial down, then we went equatorial up. So now, again, equatorial down, equatorial up, equatorial down, equatorial up. All right, so we've drawn all our up and down positions for every carbon. Now, what did we say? Our, at our first carbon position, we have a methyl. The methyl has to go on the up position. All right, the up position is the axial position, so we put our methyl right there. All right, now we have a, so we have a branch at position two as well. It's an ethyl. It's on a dash, so it has to go on our down position. That means our ethyl is going to go here on our down position down position okay the axial is the down position so it goes on the axial down all right so let's look at this let's draw this without all the positions here all righty that means we have our methyl here up position and we have our ethyl here all right so that is our chair confirmation for that cyclohexane all right beautiful but now we also want to do a ring flip Okay, we want to do a ring flip. That means that instead of this first carbon, this first carbon position, we, which we've numbered, right? We numbered this one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, what happens is now when we do our ring flip, all right, that means this corner up is going to be a corner down, and we're going to draw our ring kind of opposite. All right, now when we do this, this one position is now the this one position, which was up before, corner up, is going to be this corner down position. All right. And so our numbering goes, our numbering goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. This is what happens with the ring flip. Right. Because it asked us to draw both confirmations. All right. So we have to do a ring flip in order to draw both confirmations of that cyclohexane. All right, so now we do the same procedure with this ring flip. All right, starting at position one, we have a corner down, so our axial position is down, axial down. All right, which makes our equatorial position equatorial up. All right, now we look at position two. All right, our corner is kind of pointing, um, our corner is pointing up. So our axial is going to be axial up, which means our equatorial position is going to be equatorial down. All right. And remember, as we go through the ring, it's going to alternate. We started axial down, then axial up. So three is axial down, four is axial up, 
5 is axial down, 6 is axial up. All right, and then we go ahead and we draw all our equatorial positions. All right, we started up, down, so this is up, 4 is down, up, down. All right, so we've drawn all our positions now. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our substituents back in here. Remember, methyl, there was a methyl at position 1. All right, and methyl's on a wedge, so we have to put it in an up position. In our ring flip, the up position at 1 is equatorial, so we're going to put our methyl here in the equatorial position. Now, we have an ethyl here at position 2, all right, and it's on a dash, so it has to go on the down position. Well, at position 2, the down position is the equatorial position, all right? So now let's draw this all cleaned up. Let's draw both conformations all cleaned up, all right? So here is before ring flip, all right? And after ring flip, it looks like this, all right? Now in our first conformation, we had our methyl up and our ethyl down like this. And here we had our methyl in an equatorial position, and we even had our ethyl in an equatorial position. So here we have drawn both conformations, both chair conformations for molecule A. Now, if you were to be asked which one of these conformations, A or B, are more stable, just remember this. Equatorial positions are the best positions to be in in terms of lower energy. In, in confirmation B, both of our big groups are in equatorial positions, whereas in A, both our uh, substituents are in axial positions. Equatorial is going to result in a more stable confirmation than axial, and so B is going to be our lowest energy confirmation, whereas A is our highest energy confirmation. Now, let's go ahead. We're, let's do one more. Let's do B. All right, let's go ahead and do B. I'm going to draw it right here. Here's B. It looks like this. Beautiful. We want to draw it in. We want to draw both chair conformations. So let's start with our normal chair conformation. Draw it like this. Highly recommend you draw it like this. Keep the numbering consistent. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. At position one, let's draw all our axial and equatorial positions. I'm going to first start drawing my axial position starting at this corner up. So this is up. For axial, then it has to be down, up, down, up, down. Axial positions are straight up or straight down, okay? Equatorial positions are either slanted up or slanted down. All right, so at position one, we have an axial up, so we have to have an equatorial down, which is slightly slanted down. Position two, equatorial up. Position three, equatorial down, up, down, up. So now we have all our positions, axials, and equatorials drawn. Let's look here. At position 1, we have a methyl. It's on a wedge, so it has to go on an up position. At position 2, we have an ethyl group. It's also on a, on a, a wedge, so it also has to be put on the up position. So let's go ahead and put our substituents. Methyl at position 1 up position so it goes on the axial up position and then at position two we have an ethyl in the up position so it has to go on the equatorial up and we put our ethyl here beautiful now let's do our ring flip ring flip okay and when we do our ring flip it's gonna look like this let me draw it properly oh that's so ugly one more time all right, now we've done our ring flip. 
that means that our one corner is going to be facing down now. All right, so this is where we start one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and we can go ahead again and draw our axial, all our axial positions. This corner is pointing down, so axial straight down, up, down, up, down, up. Remember, axial positions are either straight up or straight down. Equatorial positions are slanted up or slanted down. Now, in position one, we have axial down, so we have to have equatorial up, then down, then up then down, then up, and down. Beautiful. Now, again, remember, position one has a methyl that's up. All right, so we have to put our methyl in the up position at one. And that means it's going to go on the equatorial up position. Now, we have at position two, an ethyl group that's also up. So that ethyl group is going to go on the axial position up now let's go ahead and draw this more neater without every position showing just to see clearly here we have a methyl up we don't draw the arrows we just draw methyl up and ethyl up like so where one is at the axial position up and here's equatorial and then with a ring flip All right, we have the methyl in the equatorial position. Methyl here. And our ethyl position straight up. Beautiful. So now here it's switched. Methyl is equatorial. Ethyl is axial. All right, so that is how we draw that cyclohexane in chair conformation. Now I'm just going to take it a step further again. And what if you're asked... What if you're asked which one is your lower energy conformation, A or B? In both conformation, you have one axial and one equatorial position, so it's not as easy. It's not as easy as this. All right, so now you have to do a little bit of thinking. Well, which group is bigger, ethyl or methyl? Obviously, ethyl. Ethyl is a two carbon chain, where methyl is a one carbon chain. All right. So if ethyl is bigger than methyl, your lowest energy conformation is going to be the one that puts your biggest group in the equatorial position because our equatorial position is going to result in lower energy conformation. So molecule conformation A puts our biggest group in the most stable equatorial position, whereas B actually puts ethyl on the axial position. All right, so our more stable energy conformation is going to be A. Now, the reason our equatorial position, the reason our equatorial position is going to be the more stable position is because of this. All right, now we've drawn, let's look at this for example. All right, we've drawn all our axial and, and equatorial positions. These other positions are all filled up with hydrogens, remember. These are all hydrogens. Whenever you have molecules in axial positions, all right, they're going to have interactions with some of these hydrogens. All right, it's called a 1-3 diaxial interaction. All right, that's going to have an energy cost to it. All right, so if you're going to have a hydrogen methyl 1-3 diaxial interaction, all right, versus an ethyl hydrogen interaction. Remember, these are all also hydrogens. Hydrogen, hydrogen. All the positions that don't have a branch are just hydrogens. All right, if you look at conformation B, you have your ethyl group at the axial position. It's going to have a 1-3 diaxial interaction with a hydrogen. All right, so now we have a hydrogen ethyl diaxial interaction. That's going to have a energy cost as well. But which one? A hydrogen methyl diaxial interaction or a hydrogen ethyl diaxial interaction is going to have a higher energy cost? Obviously, the hydrogen ethyl interaction is going to have a higher energy uh, diaxial interaction because ethyl is bulkier it's going to be more so in the way of the hydrogen than the methyl 
is. And that's why whenever you're comparing something like confirmation A and B, in our case, you want the bulkier group to be in the equatorial position because in that case, it won't have a diaxial interaction and therefore a energy cost to it. So I hope that was helpful. I'm going to leave the rest of the problems for you to try to work out and I'll post the, uh, the answers. If you want me to do more practice problems for this chapter or for any specific topic of this chapter, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do that. Other than that, happy studying and have a great day.